1964 Dodge 330 by Lindbergh. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model kit builders. Welcome back to another exciting Monster Hobbies What's in the Box video. And for the next two videos, we are actually going to be looking at models built by Lindbergh, which is kind of a switch because usually it's AMT or Ravel or whatever. But this time around, for the next two videos, we get a treat from another company. Of course, this is Lindbergh prior to when they were bought by Round 2. So this is like the last of original Lindbergh, or however you want to put it. So again, we got this cool 1964 Dodge 330. So without further ado, let's not forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Let's get it up to 100 likes so that it fits really high in the YouTube viewings. And Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you are the first one to know about it. So now let's go back down to our table, open up the lid, and see what's in the box. Now we get into the great age of lightweight sleeper muscle cars as we check out the Dodge 1964 Dodge 300 by Lindbergh. Lindbergh was getting into the scene back in 1997. Now check this out. Includes parts to build both the 383 V8 and Slant 6 engines. So the Slant 6 would be in the stock bare bones economical version. And then the 383, you could build a sleeper police car using that block. So that's pretty cool. It's a skill level two, so you need your glue and paints. It's more challenging. Okay, so looking at the side of the box here, it says opening hood, detailed chassis with complete suspension, chrome plated parts, detailed engine, vinyl tires, and a detailed interior. And I show you the old 225 slant 6 engine. This motor was uh, had a big long last in, or a big long run in the Chrysler lineup. Um, I had a neighbor whose mom back in the 80s had a Dodge Dart with that slant 6 in it. And that was like a 69. Dodge Dart. So anyway, most of you guys will know that history of that engine. So oh there it shows the hood up with the V8 inside. And of course the box looks very much the same on the there. Okay, over eight inches in length. Uh, uh yeah, that's about it. So there's a side view of the car with those dog dish hubcaps, very sleeper type not flashy you know and then Lindbergh also had something on the bottom and they were copying the Ravel box where it like completely flips open like this uh, it's a good cost saving thing for the manufacturer because they just printed on one huge piece of cardboard but I personally don't like these because you've got this big counterweight that's always banging and hanging off the end and uh, if you don't have very many parts on this side it will flip over but anyway, that's just my gripe. So let's move this out of the way. Take a look at these amazing Lindbergh instructions. I'll just wind this camera back. Okay, so Lindbergh had a really basic instruction sheet compared to AMT and Ravel, Monogram, those other guys, as you can tell. But they ship these all around the world, so there's more languages. So less pictures, more languages. Okay, so taking a look at this. Yeah, that big span across the top is all the engine stuff. So we start off with our 383 V8 and quite detailed. Of course, Lindbergh at this time was also upping the game because back in the 90s, all the American manufacturer model kit manufacturers were competing with Tamiya Japan and the Japanese were selling more. So the Americans wanted to up their game, get out of the 70s and really put detail and accurate detail into these kits. So, I mean, look at how much stuff you glue into that block. That's basically everything. You might as well like machine this out of steel at this point. So anyway, you get your 383 and as an option, there's the slant six, which is another really cool one. So you got an extra engine to display in here. And look at that, there's six panels showing you all the stuff to put together on that slant six. 
So we start with the engine block going together and the transmission. Then you've got your intake and exhaust manifold with the two barrel carburetor sitting up there. Um, then you're getting your alternator and look, they've even done the Chrysler alternator, right? <laughs> you know, there's no uh, AC Delco sitting here. And anyway, so there's your exhaust and all the engine hoses. And then you get right there and that's your fuel pumps and all the stuff going on the other side. So really amazing work. And then of course we've got our torsion bar front suspension and the K member, which was the typical Chrysler thing back in the 60s, all the way up until about, I think they got rid of this in 76. But uh, you guys in the comments section let me know because I'm not looking at my computer on that stuff right now or at a old car magazine or whatever. But yeah, that front torsion bar suspension went a long ways. And much like a Volkswagen, if you unwound the torsion bars, you can lower the front end. And this used the subframe type of uh, uh, frame underneath there. <laughs> okay, so here it shows the 383 engine going in underneath, although they do show a little drawing error. That looks like the L head six. But anyway, um, or L head six, the slant six, I should say. Uh, oh, maybe not. Okay, so here's the slant six, and they just show one exhaust pipe going on there. And the little slant six. No, I guess they did that right, because look at how long the exhaust pipe is under there. And then here, it's like right short. Okay, so you get a four piece rear differential and springs, and then you add your shocks in and drop that thing with the drive shaft right in there. Uh, drop the coin right into the slot. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, here's your engine shroud with the separate radiator and the horns mounted separately. Then you get your splash panels in there, the inner fenders, the firewall and the master cylinder. Now these were all welded solid because that was part of that subframe assembly deal. Then we've got our separate side panels which are very nicely molded, separate armrests, separate instrument cluster, and steering wheel and whatnot. And then that glues into your frame, your chassis. Then look at the windows. They're all separately molded with the, the no draft window vents. Remember those? And then of course you get your grill going in. Two, P, two part grill with four headlights or, or however, what, what am I looking at there? That's what I'm looking at. Then you get your rear body panels going together. Then this also included the hood um, springs to mount with the hood up, or just don't glue it on and leave it down. And then of course there's all our wheels going in and you even get windshield wipers. So now here's your paint and decals. So there's the colors these, these came in. There's a gray if you really wanna get really plain Jane, real nice. Left and right shows your decals going there and then a dashboard decal. So remember to, that dashboard decal before you uh, glue your dashboard in <laughs> into the body with the windows up. Anyway, so there is your 64 Dodge 330 instruction sheets. Now let's go down and look at the actual model. So we begin here by looking at the body of our 1964 Dodge 330. And as you can tell, it is quite a crisp looking body. There is a bit of flash here and there, but nothing too major. It's got the nice bar across here for our right radiator and the hood latch. You got that sunken in detail right there where the hood would catch. Overall, it's a bit soft looking, but it is quite crisp as well. You actually have the corrected fender panel here with the line that goes right down to the bottom. The uh, That would mean that the front fenders on this come right off here and they're not sitting on a sill like on the GM cars where this line goes straight out. Anyway, quite a nice looking car. There is a little bit of a... there we go. A little bit of an indentation here. That's going to be for your symbols. I do believe are on the decal sheet. A couple of nice ribs on the back of the trunk lid here. Very hard to see when it's white plastic, but anyway, so there we go for the body. So over here we have a what looks to be an automatic transmission. 
just with the way the bell housing is and uh, the oil pan and whatnot or the transmission pan sorry not an oil pan uh, the detail on these is pretty light but it is still there they're quite a, a good amount of um, sunken in parts here on where it would hook up to the bell housing on the engine so not too bad of course a and B side right so I'll move the transmission out of the way and then here we have the exhaust pipes so these are quite simple with muffler and various pipes you'll need to drill a hole in the back here just so it looks more accurate and if you flip it over you notice there are a lot of mounting pins on here just so that the exhaust pipes can fit into the frame now on this part tree we have a bunch of the different engine components we have the left and right hand sides for the six cylinder block the slant six and of course a very unique looking valve cover that's molded at an angle there's our intake manifold for the slant six and our transmission pan for the slant six as well as well as exhaust manifolds and uh, pulleys timing chain covers the little teeny air cleaner up top the um, these are for the v8 the exhaust pipes or the mufflers that's for the interceptor type motor or whatever they claim this to be <laughs> the fan and the rad hoses and of course all the little bits and pieces I do believe that's the master brake cylinder so I'll just bring these up to the camera and there you can see see the great detail in there I even have the oh all the little holes for the components there's our intake manifold for the V8 the air cleaner is sort of plain Jane and so is the little six cylinder air cleaner but all in all this should build up to be a very nice set of engines so next up on this parts tree is of course the front seat and the back of the front seat as well as our hood for our car now looking at these components closer up you can see it does have the seat molded detail in here this would be a split bench so that it would fold forward or possibly at a bit of an angle so that people can get into the back seating area and if we take our hood here and just turn it over you can see there is some light detail here on the ribs underneath if you, there you turn out of the light there's two little sunken in holes here for like a cross ram that would go through the hood so I uh, I can't remember the Lindbergh kits if there was a dragster version of this and uh, maybe those holes were for the uh, dragster so that they could just mold one set of sprue here like this one parts tree for two different kits and of course we got some little dots in here for our hood hinge to look onto as well so our next parts tree has us looking at the suspension components uh, here we have our cross member and there's the differential right there the two sh uh, sp shock absorbers well, it's one of those days is it okay and then we have our front suspension component for underneath on the B body Chryslers is that right I don't know then we got our two leaf springs this would be the cross brace for our mufflers to go through a nice detailed radiator and our firewall oh and there's the second part of the master cylinder okay so here is our next sprue and we've got looks like our wheel backs and brakes and these would be retaining clips here now we have a dashboard that's interesting because it doesn't have any gauges on here it's actually a decal that would go into that area then we have our inner fender aprons for the front and this looks to be something for the rear bumper probably is not sure what these two are have to look them up in the instructions And now here's an interesting parts tree. You got the battery, the steering wheel, the wheel backs, the parts that you see. The tire would go out here, of course. And then we have our V8 engine, again looking like an automatic. 
There's our cylinder heads and our valve covers and the front timing chain cover and a couple of radiator hoses down below. Now here's a cool little bit. On this parts tree there's a lot of flash but we got the fan belt for the V8. Er, the, over here this is the fan for the V8. These look like upholstery items like inner door handle poles or something. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's your drive shaft. These look like torsion bars for the torsion bar suspension. There's some springs for the hood. Here we've got that split cross ram intake with the dual four barrel carburetors. The oil pan and the horns for under the hood. Now this parts tree has the radiator support wall, goes in the front, the rear back seat with some detail, and then we have the front wheels and the back wheels. You can always tell because the front wheels have that little cap in there where the bearings would go and the rear wheels because they mount onto the drive shaft. The drive shaft has the bearings inside it. Now we have the typical Mopar B-body style under chassis here with the subframes and then it had the perimeter here on the sides. Um, now I can't remember, is it actually Chrysler B-body? Uh, you guys would know in the Chrysler collector groups. So anyway, we've got nice detail under here, nice and crisp. The gas can, uh, tank <laughs> and all the little ribs and details in there. So it looks pretty good. Let's just flip this over. Now it doesn't seem to have any molded carpet or anything into there. So that would mean that the next piece has the carpet on it. And for our final white parts, we have the two door panels and we've got the bottom floor for our interior. And so as you can see, the, there is carpet molded on here, the transmission hump in that. There are some of these mold marks which will have to be scraped down with your number 16 hobby blade. There are some sink marks in here too, of course. But these door panels are very nice because they've been molded flat. So they've got a good detail on the door handle pulls as well as the window cranks. And there are the armrests in here, the holes for them to mount. So next up we have my favorite part in all the model kits and that's the chrome tree. And there's some pretty neat details on here. There are the little dog dish hubcaps going down here. The grill is really interesting because it's hollow right in here. And here's the front grill insert. So you got the chance to actually use your uh, black wash in here to make the details pop up and then you scrape around the outside, scrape in behind here for your glue to glue or uh, plastic to plastic contact and just move that into there. And it's got enough for the four headlights. Now one thing I found interesting is there are no red taillights in this kit. If we turn this over here, I'm going to bring this up. These are the taillights. You have to get some Tamiya clear red paint or something like that and paint them inside the four squares. Then you glue them to the back of the car. So quite different. There's the console shift and the nice chrome in there. And somebody binging me on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, then we've got our four barrel carburetor and a bunch of the other things. I believe that's the uh, Del or the Chrysler alternators. Now here we have the windshield and glass components. So there's the front windshield there and it does have the sun visors molded in at the top. So that's nice. The rear window is, of course, pretty flat looking. There's our front headlights and these are the rear windows on the sides of the car. All right, so our final pieces in this kit are the tires. And these are really nicely detailed by Lindbergh. If you can see, they have the nice side ribs on here for the uh, old pie type of, uh, pie crust type of tires on the sidewalls. And I did try to read what the tires were. They seem to be Goodyear uh, 
custom Super Eagle tires, but I'm not 100% sure. I mean, we're talking like three point script on here. They do have a nice tread pattern. It's the typical 60s zigzag that's on there, but these would make good tires for any of your AMT kits and that sort of thing. Although I am not sure exactly what the diameter of this hole is and if they'd match up to any other wheels. But they are a nice alternative tire from like AMT using the Firestones and whatnot. And last but not least, I did make a little mistake when I said the tires were our final component because it's actually the decal sheet. So here we have a Washington 1964 Dodge and an Idaho 64 330. I'm not too sure if these are what the original license plates look like back then, but I think these are more modern, more 90s, 2000-ish. These are the little gauges for your dashboard. And then we've got some, oh, that's the speedometer. And uh, then we have the other little bits that go on the body and in the engine bay. And that completes our review of the Lindbergh 1964 Dodge 330. And wasn't that a great review of the 1964 Dodge 330 by Lindbergh? And hopefully when you're out in Cyberland or at a garage sale or whatever, you can find one of these great beauties for your own collection. Because this one's mine and it's keeping in my collection. <laughs> but anyway, next week, as promised, we will see another Lindbergh kit. And you will want to be the first one to know about it. So how can you do that? Well, it's easy. Just pound that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you get to see it first. And of course, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes so it surfaces up to the top in a Google search engine whenever anyone is looking for a 64 Dodge 330 model kit, or maybe even the real car. <laughs> and until next time, happy model building!